So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking about optimizing a multidimensional convolution operator on GPU for 3D Mark Markchenko imaging. This is a collaborative work between uh, uh, Sinai Cinematech, HPC Center in Brazil, and uh, NVIDIA. And Victor, who's the prime author of this, this, this work, could not make it, so I'm uh, presenting the material for, for you guys today. All right, here we go. So Markchenko, in a nutshell, basically, given some seismic data generated and recorded by seismic devices at the surface, you pick an arbitrary point in the subsurface. And the goal is to retrieve the equivalent signal that would have been recorded if a source or receiver had been placed at that uh, focusing point in the subsurface. The good news is that this method is quite robust against uh, subsurface velocity model inaccuracies. And basically, there are many applications among them, um, redataming seismic wave fields poten potentially be be below uh, uh, complex overburdens, which allows us to do maybe target imaging, target SWI. We can also retrieve the internal multiples at acquisition levels, which also allows us to, to produce seismic images that can be free of uh, multiple related artifacts. So this is a, uh, an example taken from Brackenhoff et al. 2021. On the left, you have the RCM, the conventional image RCM. You can see uh, with the red, the red arrows are pointing towards uh, spurious reflectors. It's subtle to see, but you can see uh, people that are interpreted, they would, they would know. And those spurious reflectors, they correspond to internal multiple artifacts. And if you could, you could wrongly interpret those, those uh, reflectors as, uh, as a physical boundary. And you can see that with the Marchenko imaging, oh, sorry, maybe I don't need the microphone. Can you guys hear me? Mic is good. Okay, mic is good, by the way. Okay. Right, and so basically, uh, with the Marchenko imaging, you can remove such artifacts. Okay, so the, the, the talk today is really how to optimize that workflow, uh, not talk too much about the geophysics. So I'm going to talk, uh, the, 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 the talk is going to be decomposed in three parts the theoretical background, the GPU optimization in C and CUDA, then some performance analysis. All right, so what we have, we have uh, the surface of the earth, we have a, a collection or a dense carpet of co-located source and receivers, and we have some data that is generated by those, those source and receivers, and we are going to select a subsurface point, XF. And the goal, as I mentioned earlier, is to retrieve the Green's function, the ultimate goal of this method is to retrieve the Green's function as if that focusing point, whether these are a source or a receiver. And to do this, we need to, this process is done by an iterative another iterative process uh, where we're going to compute uh, iteratively the, the so-called focusing function that depend on sur subsurface point XF and also on the surface point and on time. So we're gonna do this for, we're gonna do this for a lot of multiple focusing points and eventually with those, I'm not gonna delve into too much detail, but with enough points, you're gonna be able to recover uh, the Marchenko image. And basically this talk is about how, we, how we're gonna conduct that iterative process. We're gonna start, like you fix a, uh, for a given focusing point, you're gonna start with an initial uh, uh, focusing function and you're gonna iterate until you're happy, you have convergence and uh, trust me, when you get to that convergence, you can retrieve the Green's function. This is the, this is the, the talk. Today we're gonna see how we go from f of n to f of n plus one and we're gonna optimize this on GPU. So the merchant, so the so let's go about like kind of the math mechanically what we have to do in terms of mathematics. <coughs> so I'm going to take you from f of n iteration n to f of n plus one. So you start with the with the focusing function it depends on on the which depends on the on the position in, in space and uh, in the focusing point. So you're you're going to convolve this convolve this in time with one trace in the data and you're going to sum that convoluted traces, th those two convoluted traces, you're gonna sum this over all, all you're gonna sum all the contributions of the receivers from your data, okay? You're gonna apply a muting mask, and this is going to give you more, like the time reversal of your updated, your updated uh, focusing function at iteration n plus one. And this, for the remainder of the talk, I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna label this the Marchenko integral at iteration n, and that's, as you see, that's the computational bottleneck, and that's where we're going to try to optimize in GPU. So when I uh, kind of uh, put the transfer this into uh, apply this uh, Fourier transform, I map this into the, the frequency domain, and I discretize in space. This integral, uh, Marchenko integral, is what you have on the right. The quantity is what you have on the right hand side, and that's what you have to compute and optimize. And we have to do this for all sources, all focusing points, and we have to do this for all angular frequencies. And that's why we call this kind of a multi-dimensional convolution. It's just saying we're gonna be, do a big stack, big summation. That's, that's what it is. 
the fact that we have to do this for all sources, all focusing points, and our, all angular frequencies gives us parallelism opportunity, and that's why we try to leverage uh, the, the benefits of the GPU. All right, so now the optimization in CUDA and C++. So before you, uh, you uh, apply an, uh, an algorithm on, on a com computer, you wanna make sure that everything fits in memory, and for the, the 3D example, data set example that we took, um, 12,000 shots, 12,000 receivers, uh, 129 frequencies, and 100 focusing points. Obviously, this, the, the, mem the memory footprint was too large, so we had to basically divide <coughs> the, the, the full batches of shots into many batches, such that each batch fits in the GPU memory. And now I'm going to exp give you like a rundown of the, the algorithm that we built um, for this, uh, to optimize this integral. So we start with loading the full data set on the CPU pin memory. The data set is still in the time domain. And we're gonna do all the allocation on the GPU. Then we're gonna loop over iterations. We're gonna first copy the, we're gonna copy the first data batch from the CPU to the GPU and apply, uh, uh, and map this into the time domain using a, an FFT library on the, two FFT on the, on the GPU. And then we're gonna loop over the, all the different batches, the, the, the remaining batches. And this is where the, the first parallelism comes in. We're going to asynchronously copy the next batch, VI plus one, from the CPU to the GPU. And following this, we're gonna map it into the frequency domain with the, with the FFT. While this is being done, we're going to start computing, we're gonna compute our integral, Marchenko integral for this entire batch of, batch of shots and all the focusing points. And you can see this is gonna be done on a different stream than the, 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 the mem copy and the, the FFT. So that's where the first parallelism comes in. And then it, once you're done with all the batches, you're going to bring back, the mar you have your Marchenko integral at iteration n, you bring it back to the time domain, you do your muting, you bring it back to the frequency domain, but you only have to do this once per iteration. It's really fast. And here I'm going to show you in the next slide, I'm gonna show you kind of like a, a, diag a schematic diagram of how, how it would look like if we were to profile our code. And I'm going to highlight this overlap between copy, copy and compute. So this is what it would look like schematically. The horizontal axis is time. We have two streams, as I mentioned. The first stream, let's say, that, so first of all, here we're within one iteration of Marchenko. On the first stream, was first we've assumed that we've computed by uh, batch I until I minus one, and we're gonna do I and I plus one. So the first thing, is, okay, the, the stream one is going to compute the Marchenko integral for all focusing points for that data batch. While this is being done, we're gonna load the next batch and apply FFT. And that batch is gonna be reused for the next computation, the next integral, and so on. That's it. So the key, the key point here is that the GPU stays busy the entire time. You can see there's no gap in the timeline. And therefore, we are able to, to hide this latent, this, latent this, memory through, this memory copy latency. So now let's look at the data layout, how we organize this in, in GPU memory, in the computer memory. So we have two inputs to our integral. We have the data, that's frequency, receiver, and shots. And we have the focusing functions. Frequencies, receiver, and focusing point. And the output, the overall output of the Marchenko integral for one iteration is basically, uh, it's, it's a, 3D, a 3D cube, like frequencies, receiver, and focusing point. That's the output. We have the fast axis is frequency, and the slow axis is either uh, uh, shots for the data, for the data array, or the focusing point for the focusing function array. So before I go into like more highly dimensional stuff, I want to show you on a simple case what is done mechanically. So here I assume I have one focusing point and one focusing function, one, one, one shot, one focusing function. What happens? You have two array, you have the data, which is a 2D array, and you have the focusing function. And what this, the, 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 the integral would be just basically taking those two, those, two, those two panels, multiplying them pointwise and stacking along receivers, which is the horizontal, horizontal axis. That gives you one trace. So keep this in mind, and now when we, you're gonna see it's easier to understand the higher kind of dimension uh, process. All right, so now we're gonna dive into this part of the, the workflow. This is the, where the second kind of optimate, the parallelism occurs, and we're gonna look at the kernel. So the Marchenko integral will be in this, the kernel will compute the Marchenko integral for batch BI, for one batch of shot, and all focusing points. In fact, the, coup, the kernel that we write is done focusing point by focusing point. So you have a loop inside that green uh, rectangle, you have a loop that loops over focusing point, and the kernel will, will process one batch of, the, the full batch of data, but only one focusing point. I'm gonna show you this. So this is the, the two inputs of, that, of our CUDA kernel. 
the data that, that has B uh, shots, and the focusing function is 2D in a 2D array for one focusing function. And so the first, if I come, come, come uh, kind of uh, follow what we saw for one shot, one, one, uh, one focusing function, the first shot will give you one trace, the second shot will give you a second trace, third trace, and so on. So the output of our kernel should be kind of the number of frequencies in a 2D array with the number of frequencies and B for the number of shots in the batch that we're processing. So let's dive into the kind of the kernel optimization itself. So here I'm showing you the two inputs of our kernel. On the left you have the data input and the, on the right you have the focusing function Fn at iteration n. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down the problem into thread blocks of 32 by 32 threads. And here our kernel will process this, uh, the, the green uh, block, uh, thread block on the left. And this, this green is going to interact or work or process work with the, the, the green array on the focusing function. Here I'm not showing you the output. I'm only showing you the, the input with the thread. So now we're going to zoom in into what happens more precisely within a block, a thread block. So here, um, so this, this, is a, this is the thread block on the left. This, this is the thread block for the, for the data. On the right is the thread block for the focusing function at iteration n. Each thread block is going to process 32 frequencies and 32 shots. And each thread will process one frequency and one shot at a time. So here, basically, one thread is going to take that, uh, that red element, it's going to multiply by this blue element in the focusing function array, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this for, it's going to loop over all receivers, We'll do this for the next receiver, and so on. And it's going to compute the cumulative sum across all 64 receivers. That's it. So that's what one thread does. So I'm going to let's look at more closely what happens and where we use this parallelism, and you'll see uh, where the kind of the trick comes in. So now let's focus. Let's go back, and we're going to look at what happens for warp. A warp is the minimal minimum amount of warp that the GP, GPU can do in parallel. So here, warp, say warp number two in that thread block, is going to work on 32. Here, the uh, it should be 32 elements in red. So it's the warp is going to work on 32 threads, 32 frequencies, and the warp is going to have to multiply that array pointwise with the array uh, on the right in the in the focusing function in the other input. Now, basically, among other things, the warp will have to load that the blue array. Um, is going to have to load it at some point. And it turns out that warp number two will use that array, but also warp zero, one, two, and basically all the 32 warps in your, th in your thread block will have to call the same memory, uh, memory, um, memory um, segment. And therefore, we're going to be able to like, reuse that memory segment for all warps. And in fact, this, this, uh, this blue array of 32 elements only needs to be called once. And basically it's going to stay, without having us to do this uh, explicitly, it's going to stay in the L1 cache of the GPU, and thereby we're going to take advantage of this memory locality. And we're going to reduce the number of memory calls from L2 and, and, and uh, the expensive memory calls from L2 in global. That's the trick. And, we, and then as we loop, as, as each thread or warp loop over the receiver axis, the same phenomenon will occur, we'll only have to load that uh, small blue array once for all warps. And then, of course, there's the cumulative, kind of cumulative sum over all, across all receivers. And now we zoom back, and here there's the color, so we're looking at our computational grid. Again, I'm only showing here the, the inputs. This is just to, to say, like, all those green blocks are gonna work on the same, are gonna work with the same kind of uh, uh, part of the input array. That's just, just my color code. And you do this, you're gonna decompose your computational grid with thread blocks as, as so. Note that you still have to, have, at the end, you still have to stack uh, across all receivers. So to stack between, to sum between different blocks, we're going to use atomic add. And once you've done that, again, here I'm only showing the inputs, but once you've done this and you're done with your, you're done with the Marchenko integral for that batch of shots and for one focusing point. And here, um, I, uh, I hope you, you excuse me, the, for example, like this, this array should be like thicker and, and shorter, like it, it's not up to scale. So basically you have way more, you're gonna have way more receivers than you have frequencies. So just, just for, I just put this for uh, clarity of the scale. 
All right, so now we're going to look at the performance analysis in comparison. So we, we, we go back, we revisit the numerical example I showed you er earlier. And this is basically running one of our uh, program called the uh, uh, Insight Profiler. So this really just shows you exactly what I was showing you as a schematic diagram earlier. I, now it's, it's the legit thing, it's the real thing. So you can see you have, I'm going to focus on two uh, streams. The str stream is kind of a sequence of instruction done on the GPU. Stream one is going to do the, the heavy lifting, the, the kernels. And stream two is just going to take care of the, the memory copy. Ho H2D is just host to device, meaning CPU to GPU. And you can see, as I, as I showed you earlier, you can have a perfect overlap. And note here, by the way, one remark is that here this works because the blue bar is longer than the green bar. And that's, if you, so if you, have a, if you don't have enough focusing point, then you'll start having hitting a bottleneck. So this was really designed for this kind of algorithm with the size that we typically, that the, the person I work with typically encounters in, in, the, in, in practice. Um, anyway, so that's it. So, and then we're done, the last batch. And, and, and the takeaway again is that we minimize the, the, the waiting time. The, wait, the GPU is not spending time waiting to get, to get, uh, to get bytes from the, from the memory. And then the roof line model. So this is the, your, your classic roofline uh, uh, diagram. On the, on the vertical axis is performance in floating phone operations per second. And the horizontal axis is your kind of code arithmetic intensity. Like how much, for every time you load a byte, how much stuff do you do with it? How, how much compute do you do with it? How much math do you do with it? So we have, we, we run this test on an A100. So this is this white line corresponds to the peak performance in FP32 of an A100. And you have your roof line uh, model, and those lines basically tell you, like, wherever you are, your kernel is running, it cannot be, the performance cannot go above that roof line. You have memory bound algorithms, and then you have the compute bound algorithm where we, sh we wish we were. In this case, we have the way we could, our current implementation is still memory bound. However, it, we use 85% of the max memory throughput. And here, everything is in log scale, so it looks, it looks closer than 85%, but it's, it's 85% which is a good, a good <coughs> performance. Now we revert to kind of comparing with the CPU code. Again, here I want a disclaimer, like this CPU code was not optimized, so it's, but this is the only kind of fair comparison we wanted to do. So CPU, basically, we got like a factor of like 50 or 60. Again, we could have done, I think the CPU could have done much better. All right, conclusion. So we basically, we optimized Marchenko at that particular, for that particular case. Uh, I mean, we, mar we optimized Marchenko, 3D, uh, 3D Marchenko with GPU. So far it works on a single GPU. Uh, we optimized with two components. First was kind of reusing the shot batch for all focusing points and functions. The second was kind of optimizing uh, the CUDA at the lower level, the CUDA kernels to reuse and, and leverage memory locality. Uh, this data layout is like the, 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 the design of this algorithm is, 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 is kind of optimized for the forward Marchenko. If you want to do least squares Marchenko, you're gonna have to do the adjoints, and this might have we might have to, to change the adjoint the, the process for the adjoints, and of course like multi engine implementation. With that, I, well, first I want I would like to thank uh, the Ken Kennedy Institute for allowing us to present. I'd like to th uh, thank Petrobras uh, for sponsoring the project. Uh, to you, Dell, uh, Senai Symatec, our pro the, the, the person who actually uh, did most of the work, and Nvidia uh, for allowing us to present here today. I'd like to thank you and take any questions. Thank <laughs> you.